Watch when it goes down. We're live. Good afternoon, everybody. Ani, bonjour, Sego out there in uh, online joining us today. We're so grateful that you're here all across Troy and Lakelands District School Board. Um, Holly Indigenous, it's my honor to be here. I've met so many of you throughout the years. My name is Holly. I'm the Indigenous Education Curriculum Consultant. And here with me today are some students from Macaulay Public School. Let's hear you, Macaulay. <laughs> joining us here to help and share in the teachings that we have. I'm so honored to share with you today um, some friends that have come to join and to honor and to talk about Truth and Reconciliation Day here across TLDSB. And I'm going to introduce some really important ones here today and offer some tobacco to those individuals. So Elder Stock is joining us. Nyala, Nyala. We have Knowledge Holder O'Connor, Miigwech, and Skabe with Monokami, right? The youngest one here, he says, yes. We're so grateful that you're here, and they're going to be here joining us today, teaching us and sharing all kinds of uh, really important messages about why we're here today and some sharing some cultural teachings as well. Um, and so I'm also really excited to share that this year, uh, where there's a team of us in Indigenous education. There's five of us women who are working together across the board to support students just like you and all of the learning and work that we do in our classrooms and schools. And um, one of those wonderful women is here today to start us off. This is Kelly Moore, and Kelly is joining the Indigenous education team coming from teaching in primary. So welcome, everyone. For you, my friend, Miigwech. Well, hello, everyone. Everyone here in person, you've met me. I'm Kelly Moore. Uh, my name is Kelly, Kelly Indijnikas, uh, uh, meaning for, I'm from the Bear Clan. And I have a couple of responsibilities. The first one is to talk to you, the live audience out there. Uh, just to let you know that we are at over 2,200 students we are reaching in TLDSB today. So thank you. Everyone here and everyone out there, give yourselves a nice round of applause. Wow. <laughs> so our virtual audience, I'm speaking to you right now. We do have a live feed going through Google Meet as well as YouTube. Please, if there are any issues or questions, type them into the chat pod. We have people monitoring it and we will get to your tech issues as soon as we can, and the questions hopefully we'll get throughout the day. My second job here today is to talk about Orange Shirt Day, Day National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. I feel really honored when I look around the live audience here, and I know what's happening out there. I know that there's a sea of orange out there too, so well done. But we just need to remember why we're here. We need to be grateful that a woman named Phyllis shared, was brave enough to share her story with us as an opportunity to learn the truth, but also an opportunity to make a better future. So I just want to say thank you, Chi Miigwech, to all of you out there and all of you here today for wearing your orange today. Today is a spirit day. But it's not a spirit day like we, we would have at school. It's a spirit of heart. So I want to say thank you for keeping this day in your heart and remembering the true spirit of today. And the last thing I have to talk to you about is the idea of multi-generational learning. In my culture, we don't divide into age groups or classes. Everyone gathers together at Circle for teachings and to listen to stories. And I know that is what's happening today, so I want to remind you to keep that in your mind as we move forward. Out there, we have our youngest learners. And as I said this morning, you know, the, the young is three years old still, and their only wish is to become four. That's what they just can't wait for. All the way to our oldest learners at TLDSB, the grade 12s who just can't wait to graduate. They just want to be done. They've worked very hard. And when you're listening, the same as we would when we, were, when we are in circle, you often hear stories over and over and over again. 
every year. And each year you take something or receive something different. So I just want to remind everybody here and everybody out there not to focus on what you don't need out of today. I want you to listen for what you do need. So with that, I'm going to pass the microphone over to my good friend, Sherry. Ani, bonjour, sego, everybody. I am Sherry Telford, and it's wonderful to see all of you here, and it would be great to see all of you out there um, in, in the virtual world. And I would like to begin us, um, start us off with an acknowledgement. And normally when I do this, I speak using what I know in my mind and in my heart. Um, but I'm actually going to read our school board's land acknowledgement because it's important. You've heard, you may have seen it or heard it before at, at assemblies or in your class or the um, announcement system. So I'm going to read it and then I'll just say a bit more. Um, and as you listen, and it might be on the screen for those of you at, at home or at, at home in your classrooms, um, I want you to pay attention to words that are unfamiliar to you or concepts, ideas in there that you're not sure what they mean. Because not knowing that is important for us to recognize. So here we go. Torium Lakelands District School Board, as a learning organization, acknowledges that we live, learn, and work on the traditional lands and waters of the Ojibwe Nation and the Huron Wendat Nation, and that now includes communities from the Mohawk Nation, the Potawatomi Nation, and the Metis Nation of Ontario. Under the One Dish with One Spoon Treaty, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabe peoples agreed to share and care for this land for the benefit of future generations. We acknowledge their stewardship throughout the ages. So I mentioned, I sometimes when I do a land acknowledgement on my own, I, I say different things uh, because I've been really, I'd say honored to have done a lot of learning over the years and met people who have who have shared things with me. And that's what we're doing here today, right? We are coming together and we're learning together and hopefully getting to a part where, where Kelly or Ms. Moore said earlier, where we're learning with our hearts and our minds. And so I would encourage us to use this land acknowledgement like we use a dictionary or an alphabet and we use it as a tool to go to and like look for the information that we need until we can create our own land acknowledgements that come from our heart and speak to our gratitude to the lands and the waters where we live and grow and learn. And we can literally say, you know, thank you. Thank you for all the hunting and fishing I get to do here. Thank you. I love you because I love swimming in these lakes. I love seeing the animals when they go by. We can start with the land and then we do go on to acknowledge whose territory are we living and growing in. And how is it that we came to be here? So there's some work that we might take away from us, our way from with us today. Um, how can we speak to the uh, land and the territory acknowledgement using our mind and our heart? Um, and now to do a, a formal welcome, I'd like to invite Elder Christopher Stock to start us off in a good way. Sayakum skanagoga. The Honadan Hayum Jats, Tanoat and Nitua Keno, Magatsanon is Yuva Gunderhane. First of all, I asked you, is there great peace with you? That's how we do a formal uh, greeting in Mohawk. It's not about just hi or hello, it's is there still the great peace with you? And that's how we were instructed to, uh, to uh, talk to one another when we greet each other from the peacemaker when he unified all five of these uh, warring nations together. And then I uh, introduced myself as my name is Tehona Danha. And what that means is he is surrounded by the town. And I'm from Wata Mohawk territory, and I'm very happy to see you. At this time, I'd like each and every one of us to listen well for a short time as the time has come to give greetings of love, honor, respect, thanks and gratitude to our creator for everything that he has placed on this earth because he placed everything here as a gift. So I'm going to ask you to just listen well for a short time while I do the opening in the Mohawk language. And I'm just going to do a very short version of it. That way we don't, we can maximize our, our time. 
Kanjo kwa se wata hon siyo ska ni kari we sa ungo e soa ne kadi ta sito we numa dato ne songo aya diso ne wahi a kwa eko rosa anyo ti na hoda de yoto wanre ne ti wan taade. Na na ne ona de yoti numa dato ne ungo e soa de yoti numa dato ne yoti ni staha ti o kum taade de yoti numa dato ne yoti kena karone de yoti numa dato ne ka sum soa de yoti numa dato ne o ti numa soa de yoti numa dato ne o kum de soa de yoti numa dato ne jun hekwa ne kadi ne oneste o za heita teno ne una umsherda. De eti numerado ne kondirio, de eti numerado ne oji da agoa. De eti numerado ne karunta so andano ogere soa. De eti numerado ne kayeri ne kawarage. Ne kadi ne otirage na agu anje kene teno enega. De eti numerado ne radiwerdas ka nata godoro ayiti wano runke. De eti numerado ne yonki sota asom tonka karakwa da yako swa tedom jini wa sumdes. Da sito e numerado ne so gwa zia joke naka karakwa de ho swa tedom. De eti numerado ne zi oji stokwa ronyo da hodi swa tedom jini wa sumdes. Da no ne ona da sito e numerado ne so gwa ya diso. Ona toni ore, wa gadari wat kwene, to ga teno so gene gorha. I se gene e se wa gwa dako da no a e se wa dera shio hake da no skano. Now, for those of you that are in this audience here, I remember you. I remember each and every one of you when we, just before COVID, when we got together, I think some of you were probably in kindergarten, grade one back then, because it's been three years. And then I came back for uh, maple syrup time this spring, and that was awesome. And I am so happy to be here with you guys on this day. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do is I just wanted to uh, remind us, we need reminders about what days are all about, reminders about what we're supposed to do each and every day. You see, that opening, when it says listen well for a short time, what that means is that we're actually pointing our ears straight up into the sky, just like the animals do, to listen. And then we're going we're listing all of the things that we are thankful for because the creator placed all these things here first before he made the human being. So we list all the things we're thankful for. First thing I'm thankful for is all the people that are gathered here, both virtually and in person that are here on this day. This is such a historical moment. So I'm thankful that they've all arrived here safely. And then we give thanks to our mother, the earth, for all that she has provided for us. We give thanks to all the fish in the waters. We give thanks for all of the waters, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the oceans, and the seas. We give thanks to all of uh, the roots of all of the plants. We give thanks to all of the insects, to all the green grasses, the fruits and berries, the trees, the shrubs, our three sisters, the main sustenance, that is the corn, the beans, and the squash. We give thanks for the uh, four winds, the north, the south, the east, and the west. We give thanks to the rainmakers, our grandfather, the thunders, our elder brother, the sun, our grandmother, the moon, and all our relatives, all of our ancestors up in the sky. They are our stars. They're there to remind us that they're always with us each and every night. And all we have to do is just look outside at the nighttime sky, and there they are watching over us. And last but not least, we give thanks to Sungwaya Diso, the one who made us. That's what that really means. It doesn't necessarily mean the creator. It just means the one who made us. And now that I've done the best of my ability, should there be anything that we forgot to mention? It's not that it wasn't important. Because there is so much in creation, it's hard to remember everything. I ask that each and every one of us to place those items that we forgot to mention now and in, deep into our minds. And now we gather together as one mind. And now I open up our, our festivities here for the day. Now, I don't want to take up too much time because we have so much that we want to share with you. But the one thing that I want us to remember is that on this day, for not only Orange Shirt Day and National Truth and Reconciliation Day, this day we need to celebrate it. 
and come to a place of healing. We've had time to shed our tears. We've had time to be, be sorry and be sorrowful. But now is the time to lift our heads up, wipe away the tears, clear our minds, open our ears so we can hear the good things, open our hearts again so that we can feel good things and, and, and celebrate what, what this day is all about and be joyful. So with that, the one thing I'd like to uh, do with you is uh, I would like to do a demonstration of Unity Stomp Dance. This dance represents that we're gathering all of the colors of human being on this earth together in peace and harmony. But there comes a time where some people are a little slower. So we kind of have to back up, give them a chance to catch up. Okay, they caught up. Now we can go forward. Oh, did we forget anybody? Oh, yes, we did. So now we got to turn around and make sure we pick them up. Okay, they came back. Then we can go back again. And then once we gathered everybody together, then we're going to coil up tight, just like a snake. And then if we're of the same mind, we should be able to uncoil without breaking the chain and finish up in a circle. Now, for those of you in the uh, virtual audience, uh, you can actually uh, follow along. Uh, you can uh, clap your hands to the beat of the rattles. And with that, we'll begin. I ask that the ones that were chosen to help me with this song to uh, come on up and line up behind me, single file. <clears throat> and this is how we do Unity Stomp Dance. Hamba di mada, hamba hasa, hamba di mada, hamba hasa. Oh, yane, oh, yane, oh, yane, oh, yane, oh, yane, oh, yane, oh, Thank you very much, uh, Christopher. Wasn't that amazing? Let's give her another round. And the students.
Bond away them bay the Dishnakas. Mukwadodum Alberton Dunjiba, Shishikwani Dunjiba. Uh, my name's Larry O'Connor. Uh, my spirit name's Barnow, and that's what I've got here. My clan is Bear Clan, and my home community is Shishikwani up on Manitoulin Island, and Blind River across the way is where uh, some of my Metis ancestors come from. Um, my, my friends all call me Larry. Um, I am Metis. I'm Odawa, uh, I'm Anishinaabe, and I've got Irish roots in there as well. And so that when we're talking about unity, there's certainly a lot to a lot of unity in that their clan mix. Um, I've got with me today uh, a sash, and I'm wearing a sash, and uh, I've got a table over there. So if you have a chance to come over and take a look later, you can see some of my beadwork. The Métis are, are known for their beadwork. In, in fact, they were often referred to as the flower people because we like to be flowers <clears throat> and a number of reasons like why we do the beadwork. First of all, um, we like many uh, indigenous people, we like to dress up a little bit. Uh, so whether it's our regalia or just so we look fancy when we're going out, we may have started off with just beads and bones, but when the trading started, the beads started showing up. And the beads were quite often made from, like you know, here in the wampum belts, were made from shells. And that, that connection to the shell, to the earth, to the water, is so important. And so it, even in my hat, you'll see I've got the color of the water on the inside. So it's, it's, it's called a smoking hat. And they were very popular about 1850. I wasn't around then either. <laughs> So, but but it, it's a part of our history, just like the sashes. And and if you notice, there's that flag over there with that symbol, the infinity symbol. Anyone know what that infinity symbol means? What does it mean? Me? Yeah, real loud. Infinity symbol. What is it? Infinity symbol. What, what is the infinity symbol? It means like it's like ongoing. It's like on, never gonna like stop. It never stops. It's ongoing. It goes on and on forever. That flag was given to the Métis people by the Northwest Trading Company. They were give, given to the Métis because it represents the two families, the European family, the settler family, and the uh, indigenous family. And so when the settlers came over here and started trapping, they connected with the women and, and they started inter Mary. And so that, that connection to the settlers and to the indigenous goes on forever. That's our infinity. And you'll notice I've got it on my um, ribbon shirt as well. The sash is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, this sash here in particular, it's the colors that Louis Riel sash was. And uh, Louis Riel is a distant cousin of mine. Uh, first cousin, five times removed. And it said that this sash, this uh, was used, he used to tie some logs together and make his way across the Red River when he left playing Winnipeg during, and, and he ended up taking exile in, in uh, North Dakota, where he became a teacher. Um, and, but the sash has always played an important part. So we, there, I've got several different color sashes over there. and. They, they're, they're made for different reasons, but this, this sash here is the most common sash that you'll see the Métis wear. The, the predominance of the red, you know, can represent many things. And if you talk to, to Métis, my, some of my friends, they'll tell you different things about it. But the red represents the blood of the Red River, the blood in our veins. The, the, you know, the, the Red River, that bloodline there is so important to us. Um, but we all share the same in, inside of us. We all have this red blood. We all have it. The green represents the forest. And the forest are, are great teachers. There's so much to learn from the forest. You know, we, 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 we grow because we've got our feet in the earth and it, we're drinking up the water. And, and each tree has something different about it, whether it's, it's uh, the mighty oak that drops its seeds on the ground and the little animals go by, pick it up and re repopulate. 
by putting more acorns out and more oak trees growing up, or whether it's the ash tree that we used to make baskets with. So the forest is a great teacher. The yellow represents the out west, the waving wheat fields. So the, the, the wheat fields were really important because those fields out there, they were where the buffalo would roam and the buffalo was an important key part of our existence. The blue, the blue represents the, the water. The water is so important. Um, some sashes have a little bit more blue in them, some don't, but the blue is so important because without the water, that none of us would exist. The water was so important to us because our trade routes, when we were going and trapping and hunting, we followed that river, that those rivers. That was uh, the, our, our uh, you have the, uh, the web and, and inter the internet. Our, our freeways back then were the waterways. The blue, that's what it represents. The white, um, you know, I, I get reminded so often about different things that I learned, learned from my uh, fellow teachers here. The white, you know, it represents peace. It represents the, the, the clouds in the sky, the snow that we, we've trapped through, you know, that we retain for our sustenance. The tassels are really interesting because the tassels are like our first aid kit because Sometimes when you're out paddling and you're going through the woods, sometimes you can get injured. And if you do and need stitches, you couldn't just go to the local hospital and get stitched up, but you had some thread with you and you would sew it up and paddle on. Our, our belts, when you wear your sash around your belt, it actually, if you tie it around a few times and tighten it up real tight, it supports your back but you can carry the heavy loads. In fact, they've used it many different ways. Sometimes they used it to support and, and they would tie it up to the forehead so that they can carry a real heavy load bundle of furs when they're coming through the portages because the portages, you gotta have your hands free to carry the canoe. So you've got your bundles tied on your back. So, so the sash is, is kind of like, everybody heard of Inspector Gadget? Yeah, yeah. This is our utility belt, just like Batman. You know, because inside here, we can keep some medicines in there. Nowadays, people hide their cell phones in there. For some of us big guys, hide our belly in there. <laughs> but it it's, was a really important part of our existence, early on existence. And so that, that's why the importance of that. The, uh, if you have an opportunity to go over and take a look at, at some of my uh, beadwork there, you'll notice uh, different types of bags. One bag there has got like four legs on the front and it actually has four legs on the back and it's called an octopus bag. Now the octopus bag is a medicine bag. And quite often when the people were going from village to village, they wanted to be friendly. So they would, they would have their medicines. They would have a, a bandolier bag. The other bag there is a bandolier bag and it knows that you're friendly. So you would trade and we traded our furs. We trade traded different things and in exchange. We would get things like more beads, which we love our beads. Um, and the other thing that we carried light in the canoe was a fiddle because the Métis do a dance called the jig. And we're not going to do any jigging today, but, but I just wanted to let you know that, 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 if, that if you have an opportunity to go to a Métis gathering, you may have an opportunity to dance a jig. And so sometimes you get to hear the odd jig on Tales from the Big Canoe. <laughs> I have a radio program called Tales from the Big Canoe, and I'll play the odd jig on there as well. Um, but anyways, that, that's uh, the, the stories that I want to share with you. Um, and if there are, do you have time for questions? A question before I pass the mic? Yeah, Any, anybody got a question? Just, you've got the one. The, the, the estimate of number of Indigenous people here were, were in the millions. And the important thing to remember too, that, that I like to point out is uh, I'm Métis, 
I'm uh, also in this map, eh? So that, the Métis are one group of Indigenous people. The Inuit up in the far Arctic, you know, they're another group of Indigenous people, the First Nations are another. And, and so all three peoples had children that went to residential school. And the sad thing about residential school was our language was taken from us. And in some cases, they wasn't shared. So my relations that went to residential schools, there were seven of them. And the seventh one in the registrar doesn't have her spirit name in there. All the rest of them had their spirit names. So at that point, their mother knew, you know what, those white people in school, they don't want to have spirit names for these kids. So they took it away and erased it. So she didn't have a spirit name. And she also uh, was one of the ones that never came back. She died. Um, so there's not a, a, an Indigenous person in Canada that hasn't been touched by the residential schools. But we're now talking about change. And this would, that's what this celebration is about. It's about moving forward and having something positive going forward. So with that, thanks for that question. I'm going to pass it on to my friend here, Dave, Elder Dave. He's the youngest one here, apparently. <laughs> here you go, Dave. Miigwech. <laughs> All rise. I'll teach the language to you. Nani win. Nani win. Okay, we're all going to touch the sky. Now we're going to touch the ground. Take it all off. Okay. Mudbid. Let me sit down. So that's just a bit of the language. Okay, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, spirit. Like uh, the gentleman spoke about spirit. So, my name is Dave, D A V E. R I C E. Some call, some people call me Wild Race. There's a reason for that. I won't go into that story. Anyways, my name. I'll, I'll tell you my spirit name. Bojo. The Nakami Dishita Kazma Kwat Do Dam. Wasoxen the Benjamin Jibwe and Da. Hotawatami and Dao. So that spirit name. That's that name I was given when I was uh, when I was 30 years old. But in reality, it should have been given to me when I was a uh, when I was born, because that name came with me to this to this physical realm. What is the physical realm? Anybody have an idea? Um, uh, like the present. Yeah, partly. Like where we are right now. Earth? Yes, Earth. Yes, that's the physical realm. I was a spirit long time ago before I came here. We believe these spirits we talk about today about these uh. Every child matters, the ones that have gone on. And like Larry was saying, his, his uh, relative never came home. So we think about those spirits and we honor them every day, right? And we are every day, it's not just every September 30th. I'm not a Nishnabe person September 30th and that's it. I'm a Nishnabe person every day. Oh, sorry. I want to fly. I want to fly. Okay, I'll use this little one. This feather, anybody know what kind of feather this is, by the way? Eagle. Yes. Megaze. Can you say that? Megaze. Eagle. Okay, what was I talking about? Lost my mind there for a second. Yeah, what was I talking about before that? Yes. So someone's listening. Just kidding. I'm always joking around. <clears throat> Anyways, at one time our people, that's all they could do was laugh. Because what was happening to our people wasn't a good thing. In order to have truth and reconciliation, you need to hear the what? Sorry? No, not it's something like that, yes. Like an apology? 
Something like that. But you need to hear that. Before that, you need to hear what? Starts with a T. Truth. We need to hear the truth. And sometimes the truth is uh, very hard to take, eh? Yeah. But anyways, I'll talk about the spirit. We're talking about spirits here. Because these little ones that they're, they found over the last two years, that people thought they, you know, our people, when, uh, even before time, like for time and memorial, our people, when they went in the bush, people just assumed that that's part of their journey, that they would go in the bush and creation would take them. So families thought that was, that's what happened to some of their children. Because when they were told that their child ran away from the school, they were told that, family members were told that, that their children ran away. Children your age, or even younger, were trying to escape from that place, which wasn't a healthy place for them to live. So they were trying to escape because they wanted the life they had before they got there. And which is all these things you see here, and the languages that these gentlemen have been speaking, and, and the language I was speaking. They wanted that life back. But unfortunately, some of them never made it even out of those out of those places. And they were told that their children ran away. Those are the spirits they're finding now. So we think about those spirits of those little ones who never made it home to their family. And now their families are grieving. Because that, that happened over a hundred over a hundred year span. So we, we think about those spirits. That's why we, you're wearing these orange shirts. Recognize and, and, and uh, to acknowledge the existence of those spirits that are there before and are still here today with us. We believe that they come with us and they sit with us when we do these things. When we opened up this morning outside, the spirits have come here. The spirits work through us so we were able to share what those things are in our ancestors, because we are vessels to the knowledge that is given to us by our ancestors and your ancestors. Your ancestors loved you so much that you sit here today. Even everybody in here, including myself, that our ancestors loved us so much and they fought through all these things so, so we could exist today as human beings. So if you have your grandmother, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, you're, you're lucky to sit with them and to help acknowledge, they can acknowledge who you are as a person and where you, with the journey that took them here today. So in order for you to understand where you're going, you need to know where you came from. And your grandparents will Will, will guide you through that and share their knowledge with you. Even though you carry knowledge already. As soon as you were born, you started to carry knowledge. Even when you're in your mother's womb. When we, when we were having children, we'd sing songs to those babies when you're in the womb. And those babies would kick. And they would dance. That's how we connected. We were connected spiritually to those children. So you can think, think that way and think, well, what happened to our, our, our great, great grandparents when their children were taken? How much that hurt this, right? Their spirit or their soul. So we, we think about that, but that's how connected we are to our mothers. Every one of us in here is connected that way to our mothers. And to acknowledge that every day that she gives me life. And our father gives us spark, the balance. And, and kindness and love and the seven grandfather teachings. So we acknowledge that and the respect for that life. So that was just, you know, that, that journey that we're talking about here with our people today, the spirit journey, because we're all human beings living a spiritual experience. Our, our, our spirits are touched in some way and we've learned something today, and we're all learning something today. Every time I'm with these, with, with my friends here, we're all teachers in our own ways too. 
we all carry knowledge. And I learn something every time I'm with them. And I learn about life from you people too, you young ones. Because that's how that works. I will never know everything. Because my brain's too small. <laughs> Tiny brain, bird brain. <laughs> But we, we, uh, we could never learn that much because our, our, our brains couldn't handle it. So we, I, I'm going to learn till the day I pass away. So what we try to do is to uh, share the share our understanding about this today. That woman who got the shirt taken, what was her name? Phyllis, Phyllis yes. So there was a write-up in the Nishnabek News about her the other, the other day, last month. And they say that uh, the Niagara Falls is going to light up orange. They're going to light the falls and it's going to turn orange to acknowledge her story. Her story. So there, things are changing and things are getting better. We are moving forward. So we, uh, we're, we're here walking like, like uh, the young man said, Chris, we're walking this journey of healing, right? together. It's all healing now. It's no, uh, we, we want our young people to just walk with us and heal. To heal our spirits together. Because that's the journey we're on. But to be kind doing this work. And not be angry about things. Because the more gentle we are, the, the more people will hear us in a kind, loving, gentle, caring way. So I, I only know this much, which is bungi. Can you say that? Bungi. So when the teacher starts talking, say bungi. Bungi. <laughs> so the teacher knows not to talk that much. <laughs> Remember that? What did I just say? Bungi. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Okay, now you know it. So anyways, thanks a lot for listening. Um, we will pass it on to, oh, we're gonna sing a song. I'm the songbird from the north. <laughs> I always say that because I have the most beautiful, loving voice you'll ever hear. In my, in my own mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm the youngest too. That's right. Don't ever forget that. I'm the youngest here. You know what? I, I, I need to tell young people. I skate like the wind. I run like a deer. At 62, oh, I know. I kid you not. I can still do that. But it's up to us to look after this vessel too. This vessel we have is only one vessel, and we have to look after it. The longer, the better we look after it, the longer we live and we get to do those things we love to do. And if that means hockey, basketball, baseball, running, hunting, fishing, those things will keep us fit. Fit as a fiddle. Who eats fast food here? Whoa, is that McDonald's? Okay, okay. I'll tell you what my fast food is. Okay? Oh, he was right. He was right. Deer, moose, muskrats, beavers, rabbits, fish. You know why? Yes, they move fast. They have little, little fat on their body. That's my fast food. That's a joke. Yeah, chicken has a little bit of fat, yeah. They don't fly though, eh? Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they eat too much McDonald's. <clears throat> anyway, so I'll sing a song. Yeah. This song comes from uh, 1899. Actually, it goes longer than that, 1442. I just sing a song about healing because uh, we are in a place of healing. This song talks about uh, the man of Don Makwa, which is a healer. That's my sister over there, because we're both the same clan. 
But I'm older, apparently. Yes, she's a little older than I am. So she cares a little bit more and more knowledge than I do. So we uh, we we sing this song for healing. We're gonna sing the song for the healing of our uh, our our ancestors and the ones who've gone on to the spirit world already, and the ones who are still here, who are still survivors, that they're looked after today in a good way. So we acknowledge that. And uh, I I I just uh, I taught this song to the to the to the uh, ones here that are here this morning. And it talks about healing with healing our uh, the bear walking with us and how beautiful that bear spirit looks and what i try to do with young people is to for them to close their eyes because sometimes we see things and we're really gifted and we're quiet and and just listening to them to the song sometimes those spirits will uh will speak to us in a good way okay i hope you Oh yeah, 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 with the relations out there the water the trees the air the animals the medicines and all the female species swimmers crawlers flyers the four legged and all the female craft black white yellow and red race who are givers, givers of our life and water carriers always given thanks to that life that we've been given to here by our mothers so that's that's the gift that our mothers gave us, and our father gave us a spark. Aho, Mio. Oh, we're done. We can go home now. Now go, Chimigwech. Now at this time, I just want to. Uh, I want to talk about this one dish with one spoon treaty. I know it's in the, the land acknowledgement for the school and a lot of other people are using this land acknowledgement as well. But I want to remind everybody what this really represents. First of all, the colors of this belt, the color white. Does anybody know why we would use the color white? What does that color represent? Let's come to this audience. 
Yes, exactly. Peace. What else does it represent? Harmony. Harmony. And what else? Clouds. It's the same color as the clouds, sure. I suppose the clouds could show that. But there was one more important ingredient, and we had talked about it all the way through. Forgiveness. That's a good one, but not the one I was thinking of. Trust. Trust is a good one. And more importantly, it starts with the letter F. Forever and one more thing. Faithfulness. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Not the one I was thinking about, but that is a great one. Forgiveness. That's part of it, but one more. This is the last one. Um forgiveness. Friendship. This is built in friendship. Now, originally, this was called the, the Brotherhood Treaty between the Iroquois and the Anishinaabe people. They wanted to make it, they wanted to make new friendships. They wanted to, they would put all of our battles behind us and get together and come together in friendship. And they wanted to make sure that this friendship was going to last forever. And they also wanted to make sure that there would be nothing to bring harm to this agreement of our friendship. So in the center of this belt, where it's all dark color, that represents that one dish. It was a carved wooden bowl. And in that bowl was beaver tails. That was the delicacy at the time. So if you could imagine that on this side, were the Anishinaabe people. On this side were the Haudenosaunee people. And that, that dish is right here filled with all of the beaver tails that they are going to eat. They had to eat with their hands because they didn't want any sharp utensils, anything, not even a pointy stick to come into this area and cause bloodshed that would ruin this peace agreement. So that's why this is such an important belt. Now, in the center of that bowl, you'll see that there is a white in the middle of the bowl. That now represents the spoon. That is the Europeans, the newcomers. We also wanted to be friends with them too. But we all agreed that we share this land together. We are stewards of this land. And that's what this one dish with one spoon represents. That's only part of it. There's a bigger story, but this is just the, the nuts and bolts of what this represents. And I just wanted to share that and remind us when we say we are treaty people of the one dish with one spoon, now you'll remember what that really means. Now, And now I think we'll open it up to any questions to any of us and out into the uh, virtual. Any questions from the virtual world as well? Yes. That's okay. That happens a lot. I, I get that all the time too. Okay, yes. Sharp object? No. Do you know why? Rounded. Exactly. It's rounded. It doesn't have a sharp edge. That's why they included that spoon. Good question. We have a oh, we have a virtual question. During the time period for residential school? Ooh. That's a good question because. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a little story about that. So you can understand the significance and the severity of the children that were taken. 
I, I spoke to this one gentleman. He said that he, when he was uh, younger, there used to be this plane that used to come up north, even to the flying communities. It would fly in on the lakes, and the, the plane would land, and the children would see this. The children had never seen planes before. So it really, they were really mesmerized by that. So they'd run to the dock to check this plane out. The door would open and they would steal the kids. That is how true that is. That's what really happened to some of our flying communities. We get into the, to the place where there's cars. Every, every community across Canada knows this black vehicle. I can guarantee you that people my age, older, a little younger, there was this black car that used to come on the reserves and our parents and our grandparents told us, you see that car, you run and hide. Because when they, when they seen you on the road, they just scooped you up. And they didn't even tell your parents that they took you. Kids this age, younger, taken, constantly across Canada every day and put in these residential schools. So you can't really t say how many children were taken daily or monthly to these schools. But that's the truth that happened to our children, some of our, my ancestors, my cousins. So that, that is what, it was a, we, they figure 100,000 people, right? 100,000 kids, that's what they figure. The last one was closed when? Later, I was like, close. Like 1991, something like oh, that. Yeah, that's one, 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 one. I also have another. 1996. Yes. That's the day. 96. Were you born? Oh. I was. No. <laughs> Anyways. I have a question. How much did like the numbers of like the emissions like go down after like the residential schools started? Population. Oh, the population. That's a great question. Change. That's a great question. Well, the, the population is one thing that you know, so the, the children, you know, when they grew up and went back to their communities, they, they, they lost so much. So, so the stories that you would hear and the teachings that you would hear, they were lost and, and the, you can't get them back. And so they didn't fit into the community. They didn't fit in to be uh, good parents. And so not all of them had good families afterwards. So, so if you think of the effects of it, if you're around your mother and your father, you know what it's like to be a mother and father because you've got an example every day to see. But if you're taken away from your mother and father, when you come home, you don't know how to be a mother and father. You don't know how to share those stories anymore. And you don't even speak the same language that they spoke in their house before. And so it really changed. So the dynamic changed so much. So when you talk about the numbers, the number of lives that were impacted, there, there isn't, there isn't uh, any indigenous lives that haven't been Im impacted one way or another. Good question there. Um, is it really about like the residential schools per se, or like so many, like, medicine stockpiles and pouches. Did your ancestors always used to try and cure stuff? Well, there were lots of medicine people, and, and it's a very good question. The, the, the challenge that I have as a, an Indigenous uh, person, but almost like an Indigenous orphan, is that I didn't get those medicines passed down. The, the Bear Clan are carriers of medicine. And so our medicines are carried in many different ways. And I'm going to pass that question over to Elder Dave because he, he probably can answer better than I can. I think I'm a Shkalbewis, right? You know what that is? Oh, Shkalbewis. You had them in your classrooms every day. Someone's chosen every day to be a what? Volunteer. Yes, or a helper. That's what I am in the language, a helper. Got a minute. So I'll stand here for a minute. <laughs> no, I'm joking. 
Okay, yeah. She, uh, Larry spoke about the medicine people. That's a bear clan. There's a clan system. There's there's clans, and every clan has a role. The bear clan people are like a counselor, like you go to a therapist or something. But in our ways, we carry medicine. Whatever ails you, like that bear grease over there, and those those little sh those little things I have are just a little bit of what medicine I carry. But the medicine that really, really helps our people is, is these things we carry on the side of our ears. What are they? Our heads, I mean. Ears. <laughs> ears. So we, we listen a lot and we try to help people get through the, the traumas they carry, right? So we have uh, bear grease over there. Bear grease is good for aching bones. I don't think your kids have to worry about that yet. As you get older, <laughs> your body, you get arthritis or you get, yeah, it's right there. She's holding it. That's bear grease. It's made from a bear. So then we have sweet grass and we have uh, other um, stomach, oh, stomach <laughs> ailments. Another thing I'd uh, want to add to that too is that um, when you talk about the population, is that because they couldn't fit in within their own home community, a lot of them would just go and find the city and stay in the cities. And then they found out that they didn't fit in there neither. So it's hard to tell what uh, about the population. And as for like medicines and all these knowledge and teachings, uh, we're just reclaiming this. I didn't grow up knowing this. I it wasn't until I was like in my teenage years when I first started learning about the traditions and and what traditions were ours. That was the hardest part. Um, and and why was it? Why was it different? That was the key. When you don't have that why, sometimes these things don't have uh, a meaning to you. But when you have that why, and you take it into your spirit as part of your spirit and part of your heart, then it has some meaning. And that's what we're trying to do is, we're trying to share all of the hard work that we did to pick up all of these teachings that were scattered all over, because they weren't all in one spot. And that's what was really important. Okay. That's it. So I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us. I want to thank the uh, virtual world. Uh, this has been a very historical, monumental day. And as of right now, we've reached how many students? 2,300 students have been reached today with our message of of healing with our messages of peace and friendship and hope. And that concludes. So now we'll do a short closing, Dave. Okay, I'll do a short closing. So what I'll do is I'll do the closing in English. At this time, I ask that every one of us to listen well for a short time, as the time has come to give greetings of love, honor, respect, thanks and gratitude to the creator for everything that he's placed on this earth including all of the fish, the waters, uh, the trees, the shrubs, to all of the plant life, to the medicines, to all the foods, our four-legged animals, our birds, to the winds, uh, the rainmakers, the sun, our grandmother, the moon, and the stars, and also to Mother Earth, for she continues to do that for us each and every day. And the only instruction that was given to us by Songwai Dison, our creator, was just to say thank you for all of these things each and every day. Be grateful, be humble, and it, but enjoy what is here. Because all of this was given to us as a gift. Now. Okay. And we're off. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Now Chris says we can dance. Oh, it's a question again. <laughs>